Do you need some cards from today's episode? Well, you can pick them up and support the show from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just follow the link in the description box down below. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Meme or Dream, the series where we take lists that Wizards published that apparently maybe sort of went 6-0 and and planned them a better out arena, put them through the rigor, see if we think there was any chance they actually got those six wins in a row and this week we got an interesting one we're playing five color shrines for standard and on one hand five color shrines might be the least weird deck we've played so far like we've played shrines for against the odds it's not a strategy i would expect to go 6-0 but it is a strategy with a good draw where i think you can win some games at least so it's not as far out as the last deck we played the brawl like i have no idea what's going on with griffin airy deck so it's not as far out as that although there are still some reasons outside of just being five color rides to kind of wonder what's going on with this deck so number one is the deck's playing ugin and ugin based on my experience playing shrides is not kind of the card you want to play in shrines instead it's the card you're most scared of because it comes down and negatives and rests away all your shrines and then you lose the game so it seems like an odd choice i'm not sure how we ever negative x ugin without just exiling all of our shrines and kind of like blowing ourselves out we also have containment priest and containment priest isn't a card you normally see in the main deck and i was digging through this deck like why why is there containment priest in the main deck the best i could come up with is containment priest makes the death of our banishing lights better like if we exile a creature with banishing light and it looks like our banishing lights about to die we can flash in containment priest and the creature is going to stay exiled uh i don't know if you want to build your deck around your banishing lights dying that seems like you're going really really deep but that's the best i can figure with containment priest the other thing to mention about the deck is the sideboard it's so far we've played two sideboard free decks on meme or dream this deck is even more confusing in some ways it has a sideboard sort of it has a eight card sideboard and the thing that makes this even more puzzling than not having a sideboard is when you look at a new sideboard deck it's pretty easy to be like okay maybe someone just took their best of one deck and played it in best of three for some reason obviously not optimal but i could see that happening you just jump in the wrong queue or whatever and you're like hey this is working and i keep going building half of a sideboard though that shows that you know you're not playing best of one like you actually added banishing lights and pacifisms and legion angel because we got a legion angels on the main deck but you added cards to your sideboard but for some reason you only went halfway and then after you added the pacifism and banishing lights i don't you got bored and just like tired of adding cards to your sideboard i think it's actually more ridiculous that you would build half a sideboard than not have a sideboard at all because you can't explain it away by being a best of one deck so we're playing i guess five color half sideboard containment priest ugin shrines and uh I don't know. Let's see if let's see if it works. Let, maybe half sideboard is the way to go. <laughs> At least this means that uh, sideboardy jokes could be back. We we missed them last week because we didn't even get to look at our sideboard. So yeah, all right. Let's uh, let's try and try and try and away. All right, on to game one of <laughs> meme or dream five color half sideboard Ugin rides and uh, eh, we'll see. Is it a meme? Is it a dream? Is it yank or dank? <laughs> We're about to find out. Maybe. If Alpha Wolf actually uh actually keeps their hand. Um well, okay, we'll keep this. Opponent. Fable Passage cracks it. I mean, so the good news is we can get to the Sanctum of All pretty quickly. Uh well, Temple. Scry. Eh, that's not a bad try and pass the turn. Uh it. So maybe like Gruel? Could be mono red, I guess. Against mono red okay, so Gruel, scavenging is sure. Well, Triome, go. This hand seems okay against Gruul. We need one more land at some point to... Uh, we need a red source, I guess, to get down uh, our big stuff. But opponent, Mammoth, gets in, hits us. Well, land in, Banishing Light 1 on Mammoth. Not super worried about Ooze. Like, we don't really have many creatures to go in the graveyard. Opponent has land in Questing Beast, gets in, hits us. Yeah, Questing Light's a card. Uh, Questing Beast is a card. Banishing Light number two on Questing Beast. Play the Triome Go. Mammoth. Opponent attacks. Well, if our opponent thought Banishing Light number two was nice, what are they going to think about <laughs> the Trifecta? Banishing Light Tron <laughs> has been assembled. Play the scry, lad. Ooh, all right, and a shatter this guy. Okay, things are things are looking up for the good guys at the moment. About it. 
Well, if an opponent plays a big creature, we're going to have to Wrath. If they don't, we're probably going to be a little greedy and try to get the Sanctum down. We would like to get the Black Shrine to start gaining back some life. Well, all right. Yeah. Wait, really? White, green, red, blue. Oh, we don't have black. Oh, boy, this mana base. Okay, just kidding. No, uh, no black mana still. Did we play the wrong land last turn? Maybe we did. Oh, play Sanctum. Yeah, I think we did play potentially the wrong land. Pass the turn. About it. Don't cleave us, please. Goes to combat. Attacks. Well, containment priest. <laughs> no one expects it. Are we getting stomped? We are. Yup. And down to six. Oh, this means we can't actually Sanctum. Another ooze. Ooh. Well, I guess technically we can. You know what? We gotta live we gotta live dangerously here. I mean if our opponent has another burn spell, we're dead. Otherwise we go to one, but then we have a sanctum to start gaining back our life and we get to wrath. So it's a risky it's a risky line. I mean I guess we can also hold on to this fabled passage and if our opponent tries to cleave us, kill whatever Yeah, that probably makes the most sense. So we don't die to cleave. We do die to questing beast. Opponent gets in, eats something, hits us to one. Okay. Down to one. Innkeeper. Bone Crusher. He uh, draws a card. Oh, we untap. I think we gotta go black to get out of the danger zone this turn. Yeah, get the black shrine. Go up to four. Shatter the sky. Oh, we might actually have a chance. We might have a chance now. We even survive a questing beast. And this is kinda this is kinda coming together. Brushfire elemental. Brushfire elemental. Fetch land. Well. Discard a land. They can pump it, but it's only pumping to three. Alright. So kill some brushfire elementals. Stay alive. And now we can get the blue shrine to refuel. Okay, love struck beast, sure. Well, we will definitely grab Blue Shrine, draw some cards, and I think we might have this. Although not having the green shrine is very strong. Ooh, oh boy. Okay. Uh, we will discard Idyllic Tutor, play Legion Angel, get another one, pass the turd. Want to hold on to lands for red shrine purposes? Love struck beast. Ooh, great henge. Okay, that is a good one. Opponent gains a bit of life. Passes. And a post comes it up! Alright! So far, the dream is on. That went surprisingly well. Uh... Huh. Sideboarding. <laughs> we probably don't need Containment Breeze. Is pacifism good enough? Let's bring in Banishing Light pacifism. I could also see an argument for going two Legion Angels. But I'm not sure what I'd want to cut for one. Yeah, not having any green shrine is very strange to me. Even just for, like, the sake of Sanctum of All purposes to double trigger. All right. On to game number two against Gruel with uh, <laughs> half sideboard shrines. All right, about it. What are you up to? What are you up to? Great Henge is definitely a concern. Although, I guess Banishing Light can answer it. And then we can Ugin away our Banishing Lights and give it back. Uh, well, all right. Hand doesn't seem great at staying alive, but we do have two good shrines. Well, Scryland. <sighs> Calyx, I think, has got to go bottom. I think we need actual removal. Calyx isn't removal until turn five, at least with this hand, because we need a enchantment. Brush fire. Opponent hits us. Uh, well, play a triome. Go. Yeah. Two land drop. Boy, brush fire can deal some, uh, some damage when you got a fable passage. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So we take five. Down to 14. Ooze. All right. Well, that's Banishing Light. Get rid of the brush fire. No Questing Beast, please. <laughs> oh, all right. So opponent just wilts it back. We're going to need a Wrath, and we're going to need it quick. Mountain, grows the dorks, hits us to nine. All right. Come on, Wrath. Come on, Wrath. I guess we also need more white mana. Well, that does make white mana. All right, let's scry. I think we're all in on finding Wrath here. 
with Thirst for Meaning. Temple to the bottom. I mean, we could be dead this turn. Land Embercleave kills us. Opponent, gonna eat random stuff. I guess they don't know that we can't get our enchant. Well, I guess Calyx technically can, but it's unlikely we do anything with graveyard enchantments. Land, it grows the dorks. Do they have the cleave? All right, no cleave. So if we draw Wrath, we still have a shot. Oh, just kidding. Now, if there's for meaning, discard. Huh. Uh, Sanctum of Calm Waters. Fable Passage. Crack it. So, ugh. Yeah, Clothis is really good. We can Wrath, and that will buy us one turn, but then we have to draw Banishing Light to get rid of Clothis and Dodge Questing Beast and Stomp, which is, that is a lot. That is a lot of dodging that must happen. Well, Shatter the Sky. Answer the creatures for now. Okay, so opponent has a stop, Clothis, that's the final two, and yeah. Well, good news is, we get to be on the play for game three, and that seems relevant. Boy, maybe pacifism is worth it. Is it actually worth it? Maybe it is. Calyx seems risky. Let's go, okay, let's bring in a pacifism. And, hmm, maybe go down to Ugin for pacifism? Still not sure Ugin is actually right in a deck that wants a bunch of shrines on the battlefield. Although, I guess, Lightning Bolting for eight mana is... <laughs> it is something. And if we don't have a bunch of shrines, it is good. Mm, all right, I kind of like this hand. This hand doesn't uh, doesn't have any of our big payoffs, but it does keep us from just dying instantly. We have kind of three removal spells. Gonna need to find some card draw. Sanctum of All or the Blue, the blue Shrine, something like that, but... Uh, yeah, let's turn on the scry land. Well, let's some card draw. We will keep thirst for meaning. Opponent, mountain passes. Well, triumph go. Opponent, mountain. Rhyme rock knight. Um, hmm. Do we even care about stopping that? I mean, I guess three damage is three damage. All right, pacify the knight. Play fabled passage go. Another oh, opponent's a little mana screwed at the moment. Well, crack this, get green mana. Oh, there's a Sanctum of All too. Hmm. All right, this is uh, this is kind of working. Sanctum of Shattered Heights. Go. Pot it. Hits us. Down to seventeen. Oh, passes. Okay. Okay. Land. Sanctum of All. Oh boy, if this sticks, we're in beautiful shape here. No green mana for Will. We need to fade green for one turn. After that one turn, it's kind of fine. I'm surprised our opponent kept the no green hand. I don't think uh, Rhyme Rock Knight is going to be enough. Bone crushes us. Come on, no green. No green. Oh, boo. Oh, just a Bone Crusher. Okay. That we can deal with. Opponent hits us. Well, we will get Blue Shrine. Start drawing cards. Discard. Pacifism. Play a Scryland. Um, I guess we're gonna tutor that up. So put that to the bottom. Discard a land. Kill Bone Crusher. Pass the turn. Put in place a land. Combat. Well, discard a land. Kill Rhyme Rock Knight. A red shrine could actually be pretty good once it gets going. Put as a Vivian. Now let's thirst. Discard a banishing light. I mean we could just answer the Vivian though, so this is fine. Opponent makes a beast. Black shrine. Draw some cards. And yeah, the repeatable removal is probably going to get this done. Discard Banishing Light. Shoot down Vivian. Shoot down the token. Play Calyx. Tick up Calyx. Pass the turn. And this is, this is looking good. We're going to have every shrine in our deck on the battlefield starting next turn, I think. And we can for anything forever, essentially. Like, how does how does our opponent's deck like, beat this setup? They gotta blow up our shrine, I guess, but we're actually in spectacular shape. Oh, it's happening. It's looking like a looking like a dream so far. <laughs> oh, about it. I think our opponent's asking themselves, is there any way I can win this game? And the answer is only if you can start blowing up our shrines. I think that's their only chance. All right, opponent's going to dump everything. Yeah, we're not even going to discard this turn. We can just uh, shatter the sky. We don't actually care about Calyx hardly at all here. Yeah, opponent grows the ooze. Yeah, this Wrath is probably going to be the concession for our opponent, I would assume. Get the white. 
Five shrines. Trigger. Drain. Draw. Discard a vanishing light. Shatter the sky. Play a island. Take up Calyx. Eh, take a pacifism, I guess. And yeah, pass the turn. I mean, we have a wealth of riches here. More than we actually need. Uh, boot it. Yeah, they, I think it's just... I think we got there. Well, that was a pretty impressive shrine performance. <laughs> uh, Gruul seems to have a hard time. Yeah, just... <laughs> runs out the Evercleave. Gruul seems to have a really hard time beating the Red Shrine. I mean, at the same time, we saw the Will. And they could have, like, Thrashing Bronodon. So they do have answers, but... In that game... Opponent couldn't find him, and, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> so far, half a sideboard appears to be enough. Well, on to the next. All right, on to <laughs> match two with Ugin, Containment Priest, half sideboard shrines, and, uh, huh. <laughs> Sand doesn't seem, hmm. Yeah, I guess it's fine. We need to draw another land, but, I mean, so Ugin's, like, kind of a mulligan. We can discard this shrine to this shrine for removal, Containment Priest, who knows? Maybe maybe we gotta <laughs> improve our Dying Vanishing Lights. It's possible. <laughs> who knows what synergies could emerge? <laughs> Opponent, Fable Passage. Um, yeah, I guess we just get black. Land is good, though. The mana with this deck is definitely an adventure. The green shine would probably help there as well a little bit. Uh, all right, pass the turn. Opponent... Well, the moment of truth. What colors is it? Mm, all right, green. So, could be gruel again. Could be a sacrifice deck, maybe. Ooh, green white. Interesting. I'll crack this. Get a swamp. <laughs> More black shrines. Well, all right. Let's uh play the red shrine. Next turn, we can black shrine and discard a black shrine for removal if we need to. Hopefully, we keep drawing lands. That would be the best. Or card draw. We'll take a thirst for meaning or something. That would be fine. Green White is probably good at killing enchantments. No Lurus, so I, I don't know. I don't know what our opponent's deck is. All right, more green mana, and... I want to see if Containment Breeze does anything this uh, <laughs> this entire run. I'm very... Ooh. Land of War Vision. Oh, so it's like green, green White Ramp? Well... No! Why? Oh! Well, okay, I guess that's fine. Slightly auto-tapped. We could have played another shrine, but killing that is worth it. I am not sure why they chose to leave up the Triome <laughs> instead of the car the planes that lets us cast this, but I think this is actually better, honestly. Like, killing the Mana Dork is probably better than running out the White Shrine and being tapped out. Because the White Shrine is not really doing anything this turn anyway. All right, another Visionary to draw another card. Kind of looks like Green White Yarion, but we don't see... Oh, no. Well, drain you. Play the White Shrine. Kill the Land of War Visionary. Well, if it is a Yarion deck that is not playing Yarion in the main deck, the Containment Priest could get them. If they're trying to blink a bunch of creatures, that could actually do something. These two Ugans are looking uh, not good at the moment. <laughs> Only five lads away with no ramp in our deck. Lotus Cobra. And land and mana being made we're also out of things to discard we can't discard lands we need to play lands so i guess unless we draw a random shrine we probably can't discard anything else to sanctum for a while really could use some card draw so our opponent got main deck enchantment removal you shard okay i mean i guess they could be ramping into ugans well drain ya. temple keep the land pass the turn Question's going to be, do we tap Yashar, or do we assume that our opponent's uh, going to Yarion, and we want this Containment Priest up? Oh, we really got to hope to... Why does everyone have Ugin these days? <laughs> opponent, as a forest. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one turn away from, from Ugin, potentially. Oh, a sweeper. A sweeper would also be good. Mammoth. Well, tap Yashar. Take two. Another, oh boy, another mammoth. I'll drain you. Play a forest. Pass the turn, but, ooh, I don't know. Opponent's stacking up some damage here. Visionary draws a card. Tap land. Who grows the dorks. To the bottom. Mana. 
Oh, come on, rat. Oh, we don't even have double white. Boy, that's not great about it. Primal might. Well, tap down a mammoth. Take a pretty big beating. Yeah, a very big beating. Drain you. Kill a mammoth. Pass the turn. Gargaroth. So this is just like green, green white stuff. <laughs> just, just green white mid range, apparently. Put add some mana. Well, tap the mammoth. Take a big beating. Ooh, drain you thirst. Discard Ugin Idyllic Tutor. So we're at ten. Oh, it's not enough. So we can kill this, kill this, die. Yeah, all right. Well, interesting. We didn't have any Wrath that game, which was kind of an issue. Although, I guess we also didn't have the mana to cast them. Uh, I don't know if we changed much of anything, honestly. Do we think they're a Yari on deck? Probably not. All right, go down the Containment Priest. Go up two Pacifisms. Run it like that. Yeah, I think if we had had a Wrath to sweep the board there, I think we actually would have been in pretty good shape. Well, Wrath and uh, the white mana to cast it, but... Huh. Well, come on, Wrath. And please no Great Henge. Great Henge is the card we are probably most frightened of. Bad news is, I expect our opponent can bring in a bunch of enchantment removal. That was kind of an awkward draw that we drew all those Ugins. You can see kind of the drawback of Ugin with a deck that doesn't really seem designed to get to Ugin. It's just kind of there. <laughs> Which is, 8 man is a, that is a lot when you're just playing fair, uh, fair, fair shrine magic. All right. We are on the play for game number two. Ooh. All right, we're gonna we're gonna trust that our deck gets there. You can't really play a five color deck and then mulligan every hand that doesn't have perfect mana <laughs> because you're gonna have to deal with ads like this. Good news is if we find any one land like that swamp, at least it gets us to thirst of meaning, which hopefully will find us the rest of what we need. And we do have the wrath this time, which is good. Now play the swamp past the turn. Uh, about it. Cracks Fabled Passage. And, I mean, if we get it going, St. Paul's really good. Opponent, Plains, and Floral Hedron. Uh, yeah, let's play the Triome. It does mean we're not thirsting this turn, but we have so many tap lands, we're going to need the to play a tap void source anyway, probably. About it. You sharn. Well, we just got to make the Wrath count. Gets a couple lands. Opponent passes. Play him out and pass the turn. We can dig with Thirst for Meaning. I guess now we're hoping our opponent plays like a Gargaroth, assuming we hit a white source to not die. Opponent hits us down to 16. Ooh, Vivian, that's a little worse. Eh, discard an enchantment. Opponent makes a beast. Ooh, this could be close. Well, Banishing Light. Get rid of Vivian. Temple. Um, do we want the Triome? Yeah, I guess we'll keep it. Pass the turn. It gets us closer to the Ugin. Okay. Yeah. That's another reason that, uh, Banishing Light. <laughs> Not the most consistent of removal at the moment. Skyclave. Opponent plays a land. Lava Brink Venturer. Vivian. So we get to Wrath, but our opponent's still gonna have the Vivian to rebuild. Well, Shatter the Sky. That keeps us alive, at least. Still pretty worried about this Vivian existing. We're getting close to being able to Ugin. Can we stabilize long enough is the question. Opponent going to take down Vivian. Gargaroth. Into. Questing Beast. Ooh, okay. Well, we will block. Well, shatter this guy. Not the worst draw. Island. Now if we hit any untapped land, we get to Ugin, and also sweep away the Vivian, which would be pretty good. Uh, huh. Okay, that's worse. Great Henge. And Lotus Cobra to draw a card. And land to make mana with Lotus Cobra. Well, let's thirst. Gotta hit an untapped land. Oh, we do not. All right, uh, discard the enchantment. Okay, there's on tap land. So Fabled Passage, crack Fabled Passage. Oh, almost didn't get there. 
Uh, take a... I don't think it matters at this point. Black, red. And we'll take a planes. Play an Ugin. Negative five. Pass the turn. I mean, we're fighting the fight. We gotta dodge another questing beast. Next turn, we can answer the henge. And Calyx something, maybe? Alright, Mammoth draws a card. Yasharn draws a card. Ugh. Yeah, Great Henge does not take many turns to get its value. Opponent's already kind of going off. And a Floral Hedron. And a land. Well, we get to Ugin, the Floral Hedron. Banishing Light. The Great Henge. Calyx. Sanctum. Get rid of the Mammoth. And play the Triome. Pass the turn. Ooh, we'll see. Opponent drew a lot of cards off of that Great Hedge. They might have drawn enough that even with us being able to answer their board, they might still be good. Opponent says good game. They have Skyclave to get rid of Banishing Light. So it appears our opponent's one of those early GGers. Or maybe... Okay, so they actually do have Lethal. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, huh. That was interesting. Um, hmm. A little disappointing that we drew multiple wraths and it wasn't <laughs> enough against the deck to just play creatures, but that's the power of the Great Henge. And uh, you can see Skyclave being really good against our deck, so that is a, a bit of a drawback. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's go on to the next one. I mean, the deck doesn't feel like complete jank. It obviously has some uh, unique features, let's say. <laughs> that I would probably uh, change if I was building a five-color shrine deck. But, one and one I mean, that's that's not bad-ish. Uh, opponent. All right, on the play is our opponent. Um, well, okay, we'll keep this. Thirst for Meaning can fix our mana. Hopefully get us to Sanctum of Calm Waters. And then we got some Rass and stuff. Like, this, this could work. It seems reasonable-ish. Uh, all right. Yep, we'll keep. If our mana just comes together, we do have a good mixture of shrines. Can tutor up Sanctum Evolve if we need to. What are you up to, opponent? All right, another green. Another green aggro deck by the looks. Well, keep the temple. Pass the turn. Love Strike Beast for our opponent. Well, Skyland. And I think we got to put Black Sanctum to the bottom. We need to hit another white source for this Wrath, first thing. Because our opponent's going to have a clock. Like, they're on the play. They get to play probably a 5-5 five -five this turn. So we're going to need this Shatter This Guy to come down on time. Opponent plays a Mountain. Plays a Lovestruck Beast. No attacks. Oh, boy. All right. Well, tap land, go. Ugh, so now our opponent can potentially Great Henge, and that's really tough. And we still didn't hit... Hmm. Still aren't hitting the land. I mean, we've hit our land drops, but we still haven't found a white source for the Wrath. I guess we maybe take a hit or two. Try to thirst for one, maybe. Opponent's playing uh, the slow version of Gruel, where uh, where you rope every turn. <laughs> slow Gruel aggro. <laughs> uh... All right, opponent realizes they're almost running out of time. Not attacking? Why are they not attacking with the 1-1? Are they playing around Containment Priest? Come on. Come on. Are you really playing around Containment Priest? <laughs> Is that possible that our opponent's worried about a flash threat killing their 1-1? Bone Crusher Giant. Well, we will thirst. Discard a Red Shrine. Temple. Put that to the bottom. Oh, <laughs> discard Calyx. Well, we'll see. We're taking 10? That's a lot. Especially, I mean, if they have Embercleave, we're dead. If they have Questing Beast, we're not dead this turn, but we're going to be low enough that it's going to be tough. Yeah, having a Wrath this turn would have been way more powerful. Got it? Uh, all right. 12, 15, dead. Sure. Well, on the draw, just a little bit slow to, uh, to finding our Wraths. I mean, the deck does have a lot of tap lands, which is probably necessary, but 
Ha. Huh. I mean, let's go up a Banishing Light, go down Containment Priest, go up a Pacifism, run it like that. I don't think Containment Priest does anything this matchup. I guess, I mean, especially if our opponent's going to play around their token attacks <laughs> on the off chance that we have one. <laughs> All right, we are on the play, which is good. Well, okay, we'll keep this. Only one white source, but hopefully we get there. Any any white tap land in the next turn or two would be helpful. Well, try it. Go. Opponent. Forest. And Love Strike Beast Token. Well, try him, go. Opponent. I mean, I guess the Sanctum could kill the 1-1. One -one. That's sort of something. Mountain and Brushfire Elemental. Hits us down to 18. Ugin. That's a that's a few minutes away from being helpful. Well, play the Sanctum. Forest for our opponent. Grows a Brushfire. Hits us down to 14. There's a Lovestruck Beast. Well, play the land. Crack it. Get a Plains. Oh, still can't Wrath, though? Hmm. I'll play Calyx. Get rid of the Love Struck Beast. Come on, white mana. We need this Wrath. We really need this Wrath. Calyx at least distracts our opponent for a minute. Opponent, back to the old Roperino. <laughs> Clock running down. Opponent keeps managing to not quite use the timeout. They like their clock runs all the way down to like the end, and then, and then they manage to do just enough to not actually lose a timeout, which is a uh, awkward. Opponent gonna kill our Calyx, going to hit us with a brush fire. Yep. And oh my god, and also has Ember Cleave. All right, so we're to two. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a thing. Tapped white mana. Ugh, so we have to banish... Oh, we're probably dead. But we can Banishing Light, the Brush Fire. Play the Tap Land. Two is tough because that is range of everything. Bone Crusher Giant, uh, Questing Beast. Like, if our boat has anything, we can just be dead. Found it plays a land. Well, I mean, this doesn't actually work, though. We do get to kill that. Opponent passing... Uh, so if we hold on to the Triome, it means we don't die to Brushfire Elemental, specifically. Yeah, we're going to play it. We're still dead to so many things. Like, I guess if they have exactly Brushfire, then you got us. It doesn't stop any of the other kills. All right, opponent passes. We draw another Wrath. Pass the turn. Oh, we're going to be your opponent so much time. Opponent plays a land. Passes. Well, Sanctum of All. That is a good one! Don't kill us! Don't kill us! Don't kill us! No questing beast, don't stop! We need, like, one more turn. Land. Passes? Okay. Library. Ugh. Stone fags. Go to five. Now we are actually gonna hold on to the land for a turn. We're out of questing... Well, hmm. I guess Embercleave. Questing beast still gets it done. Oh, we're so close to stabilizing here. So close. What is our opponent's hand? We got out of stomp range, at least. Is our opponent just drawing all lands? Great Henge. Okay. Innkeeper. Draws a card. Hopefully we're still okay. Well, let's kill the Innkeeper. Get our blue shrine to start drawing some cards. Ooh, Banishing Light's good. Up to nine. Draw some cards. Discard a... Shatter the... Eh... Yeah, Shatter of the Sky. Banishing Light. You're at a Great Henge. Temple Scry. I think we're going to win this. I think our opponent fizzled for just long enough that we're actually going to be able to get back in this. Wow, that was close. Questing Beast, but it doesn't do it because we can discard a Shrine. Oh, Red Shrine is really good once we get going. Like, if we can get to this setup, Red Shrine is almost unbeatable for creature decks. Innkeeper, sure. Opponent passes. Well, let's get our last available. Oh, hmm. That was a misclick. That was a pure misclick. <laughs> um, discard a pacifism. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I think our best bet is just to wait. Sure, keep the temple. This card, kill the innkeeper. Like, if we just keep doing this, I don't see how we can lose. Outside of our opponent drawing ways to kill our enchantments. Like, I just don't know how they can win from here. All right, opponent scoops it up. Hoo! Well, our little misclick didn't matter. Well, that's our recipe for success. Run it back. Can we do it on the draw? <laughs> With five color Ugin Shrides. Still have not managed to get much containment priest value. All right, on to game number three with <laughs> half sideboard trides. And uh, we're on the draw. Huh. I think we got a mulligan this. We don't have the mana to cast much. We don't have any removal. All right. Well, this we will keep. I think we just oog into the bottom for now. This is definitely sketchy. We need to hit some uh, some lands. Love Stark Beast token. Huh. Yeah, I have no idea what color we got to get with this. We would like to delay our decision to see if we draw a dual land or something. But it's a stouted ID. Mountain. <laughs> All right. Pass the turn. <sighs> Awkward mana scenario at the moment. Pony gets an it says. I guess we can just keep waiting. Forest and a 5-5. Five, five. All right. There's a trio. All right, so that does mean we get to, I guess, get white. Still going to need another untapped white source, which, ugh, unlikely. I don't actually know if we have two untapped white sources in our deck. <laughs> Might actually be impossible, come to think of it. <laughs> uh, I mean, we'd survive a turn, maybe, if there or two, if there's no Ember Cleaves. Opponent, I mean, if there is Ember Cleave, then we're just, we're super dead. Gets in. Oh, there's a, there's always, there's always a cleave. Yeah. Uh, well, hmm. Well, crack this, get a white source. I don't, do we actually have another? We don't. Okay. Huh. So we can draw an untapped white source for the wrath. I guess we could draw banishing light or Ugin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gave him a run. We gave him a run. I feel like that's a matchup where we got a much better shot if we were on the play than on the draw, for sure. Well, all right. On to the next one. All right. <laughs> More shrining with uh, with half a sideboard, of course. So you don't, don't want to forget the half sideboard. <laughs> it's standard, and uh, let's see what this hand looks like. Uh, One land, no keep. Uh, okay. I mean, this is reasonable. I don't actually know if we keep this Sanctum of Tranquil Light. It does up our shrine count, but I think we'd rather have all the lands, honestly. Uh, let's see. Do we want land number five? Yeah, we'll keep it. Like, that gives us enough lands to cast a Sanctum of all if we find it. Opponent, Forest, and Inkiba. Well, Skryland. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll keep Calyx. Opponent. I feel like we've played this adventure deck a ton. Like, <laughs> it feels like Gruel Adventures is a deck that we play constantly somehow. Um, well, Triumph go. I guess we just tap land our way into the Sanctum. All right, there's a Mammoth. Opponent hits us. Well, yeah, that is a Sanctum of all. I'll play a Sanctum. Pass the turn. Hopefully it's not land, land into Great Henge. That is, that is the worst. All right, Brush Fire. Oh, fetch land. No, that's so much damage. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, so we're taking a billion down to five. Oh, my goodness. That's so much damage. Opponent plays a shield baker, draws a card, and we are dead. Oh, come on, Untap White Source. Oh, my goodness. We hit it. Okay, just kidding. We are not yet dead. We will discard... Hmm. What do we discard? We might need the Calyx. Let's discard the Black Sanctum. Fable Passage. Crack it. Wow, that was clutch. The Fable Passage coming through. Get a Plades. Shatter the Sky. Staying alive. Staying alive for the moment. Perhaps. Mountain. Shield Breaker. Now draw a card. Discard a... Oh, how dangerously do we want to live? White, black. 
Red, green, blue. All right, we're we're going for it. We're going we're going all the way. Sanctum of all. Triome. Please no hasty threats. Like we could have Calyx to kill the shield breaker, but okay, mammoth. That's not hasty. Hits us. Are we gonna survive this? Oh, oh, we might be winning it. Search our library. Get a black sanctum for some life gain. Draw some cards. Discard a fabled. Actually, let's discard the mountain. Shatter the sky. Fabled passage. Okay. Okay, okay. Six means we are not dead to questing beast, too. Another mammoth. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, we might have it. Opponent, tap land. We will crack this. Grab a island. Opponent's passing. Thirst for meaning. Discard a banishing light. Untap. Get a red sanctum. Drain you. Draw a bunch of cards. Discard banishing light. White Sanctum. Scryland. And we'll keep the Calyx now. Kill the Mammoth. Pass the turn. And uh, things are things are looking up. Things are looking up for the Shrines. And I, yeah, I mean, our opponent just can't win from here. Like, once we have this many Shrines in Red Sanctum, it is almost impossible for our opponent to win. Because we just kill everything they do. Uh, well, Banishing Light in. Containment Priest out. One Pacifism in. Run it like that. Pacifism's a little, it's okay-ish, but it doesn't stop creatures from getting big for Great Henge. It doesn't stop Edgewall Innkeeper, so eh, kind of like medium, medium removal, I would say. All right, we get to play second, and you know what? We're going to keep this. We don't have a sweeper, but we have a oddly effective curve of shrines. I guess we still need red mana. So I don't think we keep any land unless it can get red mana. Ooh. Ooh. Huh. You know what? We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it. Living a little dangerously, but poet it. Plays land. Brush fire elemental. Hits us. Well, shrine one. Scry land. Do not need more black shrines. Pass the turn. Opponent grows brush fire. And innkeeper. And hits us. Hmm. Still no red. Do we kill the innkeeper? Do we play the black shrine? You know what? Let's let's black shrine and wait a turn. Start getting some life gain going. All right, we get crushed. Probably gonna need to draw wrath. Ooh, oh, that's a lot of card draw. Okay, two innkeepers are scary. We definitely need a wrath, and we need it super quick. Well, so we take four. We gain back two. Well, that is a wrath. Oh, oh, ho, 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 What do we do? What do we do? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would like to hold on to this, but all right, we're going to. Oh, we're going to banish Bone Crusher. There is a chance that we just die if we don't cast removal there and wait for the sweeper. There are, like, red sores into, uh, into Cleave gets us for sure. Now, Red Source Cleave doesn't necessarily get us. We take, what, 8, 9, 10? All right, Bone Crush is our face. Draws a couple of cards. We drop to 5 temporarily. Well, go up to 7. Shatter this guy. Red Triome. So we have all of our mana. Oh, nothing, nothing scary, please. Nothing scary. Nothing scary. Nothing big. Nothing scary. Nothing big with all those cards in hand. Mammoth, and Mountain, and Bone Crusher. I'll gain a bit of life. Red Sanctum. Kill the Mammoth. Kill the Bone Crusher. Pass the turn. Oh. Stay alive, stay alive. Red Sanctum does work. Pony plays a land. Love Struck Beast. And a 5-5. Five, five. We draw Thirst for Meaning. Gain a bit of life. Well, let's thirst now. Are right, we going to discard Sanctum of all? We might. Yeah, discard Sanctum. Well, I think we're all in on this red shrine keeping us alive. We can kill the token so the Lovestruck Beast can't attack. Questing Beast. Well, actually, go to combat. Discard a land. Kill the 1-1. One, one. Take 4. Down to 8. Untap. 
thirst. Drain you to five. Shatter this guy. Pass the turd. Leave up another red shrine egg. We need two turds. We gotta survive two turds. And we get there with the black shrine. Brush fire elemental. Okay. Another one. Okay. Fetch land. Well, kill the brush fire. Yep. Can't get cleave though, which is good. Opponent hits us. Down to six. I don't thirst for meaning. Decline, decline. Discard, discard. Kill the brush fire. Well, this is it. Opponent needs to kill us or kill our shrides. <laughs> oh, we got there. We got there. It's a Vivian, but that's not going to do it. The Black Shride comes through. Wow. No Sanctum of All either. We just fairly played Shrides and it was enough. The Red Shrine is really good against some of these decks. Especially if we can get at least three or especially four or more Shrines on the battlefield. The Red Shrine becomes very strong. Opponent makes a dork. Passes. We don't even got to do anything. And the Black Shrine takes it out. And that was... That was impressive. Well, we've played this Gruul deck a million times. And it... Oddly, actually kind of feels like we have a, a relatively good matchup. Like, not a great matchup. We lose to it sometimes, too, but I think we can beat it as often as we lose to it. Maybe more often, which, yeah, I mean, yeah, may, maybe this one maybe this one counts as, uh, as dank or a dream. Hmm? We'll see. <laughs> uh, on to the next. All right. <laughs> more shrine action <laughs> on dreamer meme so far uh, we've been doing all right we've been doing all right i think uh we're, we're two and two so far so eh, we played gruel like an infinite number of times which i guess is okay because gruel feels like a decent matchup but i kind of hope we play something else just to have some uh variety okay luris Ooh. hmm containment priest i still want to see if containment priest ever does anything that's still <laughs> <laughs> That's still on our list of things to see. Can Containment Priest do a thing? Uh, rogues. Okay. Hmm. This might be a matchup where we regret not having sideboard. <laughs> our full sideboard. <laughs> our side, The sideboard cards we do have don't feel particularly good against rogues. About it. Island. Wind Robber. Mills us. Yeah. Hits us. Hell forest go. I think we just gotta try to ambush with this containment priest. Fable passage. Opponent. I mean that counts as some amount of containment priest value if we get to kill something. Opponent. Attacks. Containment priest. Do you have a counter? Alright, it resolves and is eliminated. Hmm. Yes, yeah, it could be tough. We can't even play anything this turn except a tap land. Ugh, that's so brutal. Opponent cracks a Fable Passage. Ooh, we're up to seven cards. Yeah. Ooh, Shatter the Sky. I don't play a... Play a Triome. So I guess our slight bit of hope is we just untap and resolve a Wrath. Opponent hits us, mills us, grows their dorks. Opponent passes. Well, let's Banishing Light. Opponent has more counters play the tap land this is a matchup where i feel like if we can actually resolve like a sanctum or something it probably just wins us the game but can we actually resolve it Ugh, into the story yeah the old four mana draw for opponent gets and hits us so we do get to wrath but opponent just drew a million and a half cards Gets to draw another card. <laughs> and then Luris comes down to recast everything. Pass the turn. And Luris is casting, so Containment Priest doesn't actually help. Ugh. Yes, Containment Priest has done, so far, quite literally nothing. <laughs> I guess it, it tried to chump block, or tried to block a Thieves Guild Enforcer. That's the closest it has come to being relevant. Well, uh, let's just untap. Play Calyx. I mean, opponent has infinite cards in hand. Thieves Guild Enforcer to mill some cards into a Drown in the Lock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, pass the turn. Opponent. Land and Wind Robber. Uh-huh. And mills some cards. 
and gets to Lurus, leaving up probably another counter still. Gets and hits us. Down to eight opponent passes. We draw an island. Well, we will crack this. Grab. Oh, our mountain got milled. Oh, no. This is bad in so many ways. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Actually, let's just go to game two. <laughs> I don't think there's anything we can do. We don't have the red mana to play that. Oh, boy. So, so far, because we mostly played Gruel, we haven't got that punish for a sideboard. But now the punishment of having half a sideboard uh, begins. And uh, it might be pretty swift. So... Uh, I guess we go up to other Banishing Light. We'll go down one Ugin and try it like that. This is where we would love to be bringing in counter spells, escape cards. There's a big list of stuff that would uh, improve this style of matchup. If you look at our sideboard, got nothing really for control style decks, including rogue style control decks. So that that's where the the missing half of the sideboard <laughs> the the half a sideboard we have the aggro half there so it's been okay fighting against the random creature decks even though pacifism isn't great but it's still like a bad removal spell but when it comes to control matchups then we got a uh, we got nothing we got absolutely nothing uh also we have no lands we have mulligan <laughs> all right Go, go, Shatter the Sky Tribal. I guess we'll put a Shatter the Sky to the bottom and try to try to resolve some things. And yeah, we'll keep to the bottom. Temple and Legion's Angel to the bottom. We're going to need a mana, specifically white and also red. But we definitely need mana. Ugh, all right. Ooh, that's not mana. Opponent plays a land. Well, that is mana. It doesn't let us cast anything, but it is technically mana. Opponent. Fable Passage, probably our best draw here. Sorry, Thought Thief. <sighs> well, that is white mana. Unfortunately, oh, that was a window to actually resolve a spell, too. That was our that was our chance to resolve something. Awkward. Opponent gets in, hits us, mills us. Down to 19. Fable Passage. Passes. Well, Fabled Passage, crack it for a red source. Oh, play the Shrine. Oh, it would have been so much better last turn. This does get around Drown in the lock, though. And they can't didn't say please, so maybe we resolve it? Uh, or not. Pwn has Mystical Dispute. All right, well. Uh, Dreams crushed. <laughs> oh, about it. Cracks the Fabled Passage. Uh-huh. Gets a Schwamp. And... Huh. Interesting choice. Well, that's one less card in our graveyard. Opponent. Tap land. Yeah, we just... We don't seem to have the tools for uh, for fighting against rogues for the most part. You never know. You never know what could happen. Uh, shrine and a white source mill. Opponent hits us. Well, I guess we pass. Try to thirst for meaning when our opponent maybe taps mana. Opponent. Another land. Uh, the problem is, so they're not casting much. They probably have a bunch of counters, maybe some removal, and probably didn't say please that our opponent is going to be able to cast and draw a ton more cards. Ugh, yeah, opponent hits us. Rogues is funny. Rogues is a deck where I constantly hear people on, like, the MTG Arena subreddit just, they complain about rogues like crazy. Like, they think it's uh, just breaking the format or whatever. It is not a deck that I normally think of as being problematic or like even something that i really mind playing against on the other hand i'm starting to see why people might not like it because if you're playing a uh if you're playing a deck without any sideboard cards to fight against rogues oh good golly good golly is uh is it much harder all right so discard a shrine untap play a shrine opponent are we countering this yes all right well we get countered. <laughs> we resolve a black tried. We play the Triome. Go. Still don't have double white either. <laughs> oh, this is so. This is so bad. <sighs> well, I'm assuming that uh, <laughs> Containment Priest half sideboard trides did not play against rogues on their 6-0 run. 
<laughs> that's, see that's seeming unlikely at the moment. Vote it. Considering their possibilities. Hitting us, milling us. Okay. Okay. Interesting timing there. Some <laughs> mid combat into the storying. Well, get you for one. Fabled passage. Do we still have a planes left? Not guaranteed. We do. Well, alright. Shatter this guy. Does our opponent even care to counter it? <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess they probably do if they can. They did just refill their hand, so odds of having a counter are pretty high. Opponent gets a swamp. Looks like a drown in the log, probably. Eh, or negate. That also works. Yeah, well, we will pass the turn, and... Well, I guess what we have is we can thirst and hope, and then... Untap in Wrath and Hope, and if uh, if Wrath resolves, the game continues. If not, it's over. Opponent going to mill us some more. Scry to the top. Draws some more cards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Gets in, mills us some more. And, well, we'll see. Opponent hits us to six. We will thirst for meaning. Wow. Oh, all right. Opponent just must have infinite counters hit you for one shatter the sky they gotta have another one or they wouldn't have negated a random card draw even like filtering spell yeah all right well that felt like a matchup that our deck probably will win very close to zero percent of the time <laughs> we've gotten to see some of the some of the dankness of this deck against certain decks but boy that is the janky matchup to the max all right all right one more one more i mean if we can win this last one we would have technically went three and three which I think for decks like this, I think that gets, I think that gets the, the dank ranking or the dream ranking. I think, I mean, I don't know with how janky a lot of these decks look going 50%, I think counts as a counts as an accomplishment. The matchup against like green creature decks actually feels kind of good, but uh, that's, that's stuff for the wrap up when we, when we grade the deck. Let's go one more match. Let's see. On one hand, we've played Gruul thrice, and I would prefer not to have four matchups against the same deck in a video. On the other hand, <laughs> that does seem like the matchup we're most likely to win. So, <laughs> from a uh, spike perspective, ooh, hmm, we're going to keep this. That is Shrines for Days. Going to need some different colors of mana. Hopefully, we can uh, Temple of Plenty into them. Well, Thirst for the Bottom. Oh, please, mana. Please, lands. If we can just curve out and cast our shrines, it's so good. Ooh, something different. Temple of Triumph. We have not played this deck yet. Ooh. Um, I'll play this. Play Sanctum. I think we just snag a blue source? Oh, no, it's Boggles. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, <sighs> blue or red? Red lets us cast a Sanctum, but we need blue for this. Well, the red Sanctum. Calming Waters feels more important if we can get to it. You know what, we're going to go red. We got a lot of blue in our deck. Hopefully we just draw a blue dual land. Red Sanctum does potentially let us shoot things down. Okay, and there's blue mana. Well, let's... Sanctum number two. And this is a pretty reasonably good one, unless our opponent can grow a massive threat and leave mana up. Probably even more important than Calming Waters at the moment, honestly. And I guess the tap ability could also be relevant at some point. Like, if our opponent goes tall on one creature... Being able to tap it seems somewhat effective. Luminarch Aspirant. Opponent grows itself. Hits us. Gains some life. Hmm. Let's Temple of Mystery. Scry. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Do we keep it? I think we do. All right. Pass the turn and see. how well, maybe we can go to work with this, uh, this red shrine. Opponent untaps. Plays a land. Cracks the land. Gets a plains. Winoda. Well, we will kill Selfless Savior. Discarding a blue shrine. We will kill Elsid. Ugh, discarding a land. Ah, I don't want to discard this last blue shrine. All right, so opponent gets a Winoda for now. But they have no humans. Or no non-humans. <clears throat> opponent hits us for three. So we get to untap, we draw the Wrath, we cast Calyx. 
get rid of Winota. Ooh, staying alive-ish. Ponet, Castle Iron Veil. Luris to recast graveyard stuff. Now, that's not good. Fabled Passage Plains Wrath could be our our uh, our self a savior. <laughs> that might get us out of this. We'll see what our opponent does here. Otherwise, we probably have to just Sanctum and try to draw enough cards to... All right, cast this Alpha Savior. Grows Luris. It's Calyx. Yep. Well, Blue Shrine. Ooh, I don't know if it's going to be fast enough. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Plays Elsid. Plays a land. Oh, hopefully this is not Winota 2. Winota 2 is really bad. El Cid 2. Okay. Grows Illuminarchus Pirate. Hits us for a bundle. Down to 6. That's not a lot. And El Cid 3. Now we get to draw some cards. We will discard Banishing Light. We will pass... Oh, does this leave us just dead? It does, doesn't it? One, two, three... We can shoot four things? Yeah, I don't think this is actually going to work. All right, we got to... So we will pass. Well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. We can't kill the Luminarchus Byron is a problem. We can play Black Shrine, and then we could try, but we don't have the time for it. Oh, so close. So close. Oh, too bad we don't have Graveyard Date. That would be good. All right, opponent returns to the land of the living. Untaps. Now we'll see. That Lurus was really good. That was the card that kind of got us. Oh, Skyclave Apparition off the top. Oh, what a draw. Well, okay. Yeah, Skyclave is really good against this deck. Opponent's X Alpha Savior. I mean, I think this just ends with us dead. Definitely now that Winota's returning. Well, we're going all the way. We don't have any other choice. Okay, if our opponent sacks everything, we do actually survive the turn. They should not sack here, and then we're dead. Huh, okay. Well, opponent chooses not to kill us, which I guess is good. Like, if they just let Luris go away? Oh, just kidding. We're dead anyway. <laughs> None of that actually mattered. Opponent had too many layers of protection. Yeah, I don't know why I thought the last one was going to get through, but it certainly did not. Well, hmm. Sideboard-wise, pacifism uh, doesn't feel great against our opponent's deck. Their stuff sacrifices and gets protection. Banishing Light, I guess, is okay. Better than uh, good old Containment Priest, run it like that. Ooh, oh, come on, come on. Let's let's get a let's get a three three with the jank. <laughs> make it dank, make it dank. It's possible. <laughs> Oh, I still don't understand why someone would build half a sideboard. No sideboard, full sideboard. Both of those make sense to me. Half, though. How do you end up with half? How How is that even... How? How do you get there? <laughs> well, I do like the red shrine. That is probably our best shrine. Hopefully we get some more things to go with it. I mean, we can discard shrines to our other shrines. Uh, play a mountain pass a turn. Opponent. White mana for Banishing Light would be decent. Plays a Plains and... Oh boy, Luminarch Aspirant. I'll play the land, pass the turn. Plains and... Grows the Aspirant. Hits us. 17. Well, let's Thirst. Discard a Sanctum. Scry land. Don't need another land. I think we just pass. I think we're better off looting than casting this... Sanctum here for no real value. Opponent grows a Luminarch Aspirant. Hits us. Down to 13. All right. Red mana achieved. This Aspirant's kind of going off since we can't stop it. Ooh, opponent's even ball is gr mana screwed in a... Uh, still in pretty good shape. Oh, I guess I could have played any of those. Why'd they play those all in white? That's weird. I don't know. I guess they weren't mana screwed. I'm not sure why they played it all in white and waited till turn one. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on in this match. Except we're dying to <laughs> Illuminarch is pirate because our shrines aren't fast enough, apparently. <laughs> Opponent in the Tankerino passes. Well, we will. Thirst for meaning. Discard Sanctum. Banishing Light. Get rid of the Aspirant for now. 
Scry land. Yeah, let's keep an untapped land. If you do decide to play this deck, definitely pay attention to the order that you play your lands, because that seems pretty relevant. Opponent has a disenchant to get back the Aspirant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alcid and Luris grows the Aspirant, hits us. Hmm. That's not great. Uh, well, Fabled Passage, Calyx, tick it up, get a Sanctum, get a Plains, pass the turn. All right, Containment Priest, this is your chance. This is your chance to play with, uh, <laughs> with the big boys and do a thing in an actual game of Magic. Skyclave Apparition to get rid of our Lurus. Opponent, Aspirant, grows itself, goes to combat. Well, Containment Priest, block the Elsid, drop to five, which is not a high life total. Well, we will play Sanctum, play Sanctum, shoot down Lurus, shoot down Skyclave Apparition, Scryland. Um, yeah, whatever, we can discard that for damage, so that's fine. Uh, no attacks. Pass the turn. Okay. Board dealt with for the time being. Opponent. Another white source. Red Sanctum, actually. That has been the most impressive card of this deck. Oh. <laughs> All right. Our most impressive card is gone. And opponent has more Lurises. Grows Aspirant. And. Oh, we can't even. Wow. Well, play a Scryland. Keep Thurs. We can't even play the Sanctum? So if we play the Sanctum, this is what? Four? One, two, three, four. Yeah, if we play the Sanctum... Well, can we play the Sanctum? So our opponent can recast Elsid, put a counter on this, give protection from a color, but we chump block with a... All right, we can do it. We're going to do it. Ugh. If our opponent has removal and Elsid and Elsid activation, then... Then we can die here to an aspirant putting a token uh, counter on itself. Best Rue's Lieutenant. <clears throat> okay. I mean, that doesn't kill us directly. What we're really playing for is is a Wrath, I think, for the most part. Opponent grows the Aspirant. Well, we will block and block. Kill the Lures. Opponent gets a token. Well, we get to draw some cards. We got to find a Wrath. Oh, that's a Wrath. Hmm. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So, we can discard Sanctum, shatter the sky. Opponent gets a one, uh, two, two. Calyx, get rid of the two, two. Okay, okay, we're still alive. The shrines still have hope. We need one more red shrine. If we can find one more red shrine, I feel like we got it kind of locked up. Ooh, another, eh, another Lurus is good for our opponent. Elsid returns. Well, we get to draw some cards. Okay, there's a red shrine. Oh, discard the thirst for meaning. Take up Lurus. Or Calyx. <laughs> ah, with red shrine. Okay, that's fine. Ponus hacks now, but that's fine. We need to set a stop on our opponent's upkeep and kill it. Uh, all right, pass the turn. Shoot down Lurus. Oh, all right. All right, I think we might be doing it. Ponus draws. Vassery's lieutenant returns. I mean, I guess we still have to kill our opponent before we run out of cards. Uh, Banishing Light's fine. Well, draw some cards. Discard a Thirst for Meaning. Take up Calyx. Sanctum of All. Blue, white, black, red, green. Play Sanctum of All. Banishing Light. Get rid of the Lieutenant. Ooh, Triumph tapped. Okay, okay, we got there. I think we got there now. Unless our opponent has some weird bird spell. I think Shrines are getting there. Another Lieutenant. Sure. Well, now we get to search our graveyard. An opponent. All right, scoops it up. Whew. Wow, we were right on the edge of being dead that entire game. Wow. All right, well, one more time. Can we do it with our opponent being on the play? Uh, gonna need the Wrath. We're gonna need to hit a Wrath, I think. If we can hit a Wrath... And our opponent not have a bunch of selfless saviors. Then I think we uh, we got a shot. All right. 
Well, we have a wrath. Eh, okay. We'll give this a we'll give this a shot. I don't know if this counts as the dream, but ugh, more Ugans. I mean, Ugin is probably unbeatable if we live till we get to eight to man uh, to eight mana, which eh, <laughs> I don't know how likely that is. There's the Aspirant. Elsid grows, hits us, gains life. Hmm. No. Play Sanctum. Tryo. Go. Still gonna need another white source to even cast our wrath. About it. Dax Wow. Huh. So the deck I haven't really seen before. Whatever whatever our opponent's doing. Got a little bit of life gain stuff, a little bit of counter stuff. A Winota is probably the death of us. <sighs> well, play another Sanctum. Play a Triome, and we gotta draw either our One Plains or our Fabled Passage. Winota? Yup. Sure. Attacks. Triggers. Bastard's Lieutenant. Oh, Aspirant. We go to two and four and die. Oh, so close. So, all right, what did what did we learn this week on Memer Dream about <laughs> half sideboard shrines? And I think the big takeaway is there's really no reason to have half a sideboard. We saw that actually be kind of a consistent issue. So uh, if you're building a deck and you're not sure what to put in the sideboard, that's fine. Building a sideboard's hard. Put something in there. I don't care. Your favorite cards, random cards. I mean, as a pretty general rule, uh, counter spells, removal spells, wrath, discard spells, uh, those are all the kind of things you would want in the sideboard. So I think that was that was a bit of an issue with the deck. So we finished two and four, which is honestly probably about right for this deck. Could this deck go six and zero? Oh? I'm going to say the answer for this is yes. I'm not going to say this is a dream or this is dank. I, I don't think you can count as dank or a dream when you are two and four. Like, that's just not a good enough record. But we did see the deck actually, even with its limitations of uh, the, the sideboard, of technically five sideboard cards, discounting the Legion Angels, uh, which are there just for, <laughs> for the one in our main deck. So, uh... We did see this deck could really compete with, like, the Gruul aggro deck, Gruul midrange, Gruul ember cleave. Like, that matchup actually felt pretty reasonable. I don't know if I'd say we were favored, but we did go 2-1 and one against Gruul midrange. I think we got a shot against, like, the food deck, which is kind of similar. So I think there are matchups where if you hit the right ones six times in a row and also ran well, then I think... Uh, I could see this deck possibly getting six wins in a row. I don't think it's likely, but it's not like the last one we played with the Brawl deck in Standard where I really think you could play a thousand matches with that deck and I would be surprised if you got a six-game win streak and Platinum or Better on Arena. Like, I don't, I don't see how it's possible outside of people, like, literally just intentionally conceding to you or whatever, something like that. I don't think it's possible. This deck, I think it's possible. I think you get the right matchups, matchups where the few sideboard cards you do have are actually good against creature decks. Your opponents maybe don't run super, super hot. You run super, super hot, and you could just win six in a row. I think it is possible. So is it a good deck? I'm not going to say it's a good deck, but I could see how you could get six wins with it. As far as playing this deck, number one, the sideboard, uh, it, it is a, a travesty. Uh, it is a travesty. These cards are just not very good. Uh, if you would like to improve it, we have five colors of mana. That means we can play anything. We can play negates. We can play mystical disputes. You name a card and it can go in our sideboard. I guess as long as it doesn't have a really strict, heavy uh, color mana cost. But anything that's one color of mana can easily go in the deck. So I think... Adding in some counter spells, what do we see? Like, the hardest matchups we had were anything controlling. Against creature decks, Red Sanctum is really good. Our sweepers are really good. We got some removal. We got some life gain. We got more in the sideboard. Those matchups felt reasonable enough. But when we played Rogues, we it just felt like we were drawing dead. It didn't feel like we had any realistic shot. So I think you want to add some counter spells. You probably want to add some uh, escape creatures, I guess, probably just going to be Arachner is maybe the way to go, but something uh, for the graveyard for the rogue uh, matchup, then I think you could also maybe add in, 
uh, possibly some discard could be worth it. Like, uh, like agonizing remorse, something along those lines. Not really sold on these Legion Angels. Uh, we have one in the main deck. We drew it one time out of six matches, and it was okay, but is it worth it over more sideboard slots? It doesn't really fit the theme of our deck, so I'm not sure what Legion Angel's doing. So I'd probably get rid of Legion's Angel, maybe bring in some more uh, Agonizing Remorses, or maybe this would be better served as to rest and, and go with something like this. The other possibility is since we already have an enchantment theme, like maybe we could do some of this with enchantments. And it seems like that's kind of the direction our opponent was, uh, the deck's builder was heading with the deck, was trying to add enchantments because there is an enchantment theme to the sideboard, which makes sense. And then they just kind of like stopped partway through for some reason. So any enchantments you can get in there are going to make the deck even better. It might just be that like, rather than pacifisms maybe we're going like elspeth conquers death which isn't insane but maybe we can like reanimate a ugin maybe we can exile something so that would be fine there's also the possibility of constellation stuff uh if we add in like archons of sun grace feels like it could be reasonable in this deck maybe satessin champion could be fine so there's plenty of possibilities to fill out the sideboard that are not going to be nearly as lackluster is what we had and you're gonna actually have all 15 slots filled which is good so i think that i would be starting somewhere like that as far as the main deck i don't know what containment priest is doing we saw a couple of times like maybe someone gets back a feast troll keg i guess like that would mean containment priest did something maybe there's a random reanimation spell from some weird fringe deck but for the most part not really sure the purpose of the containment priest or why it's in its our deck or why it's necessary so getting rid of that i think also makes sense so i probably cut that i'm also very unimpressed with banishing light uh it just gets got by skyclave apparition it gets got by ugin there's too many things that get it and i do think that missing out on um the green shrine is very questionable like i think we want it to max our sanctums anyway it's actually if we are going to play ugin which i'm still not convinced you want ugin in your shrine deck because it rests your shrines but if you are going to do it it does seem like it's probably worthwhile to uh have the green shrine to maybe ramp into your ugin and then probably just something to fill out the lower end of our curve like i'm not sure what the perfect card is here maybe it's just cheap removal spells maybe we put some counter spells in the main deck but i think i would head something like this i know we got 56 cards in the main deck we have 19 in the sideboard so this isn't like a full-on upgrade this is just some ideas of what i think would improve the deck so those are some possibilities so i think we gotta call this one jank or a meme but it did have the ability to win games and it does do it in a really sweet way and with some tuning is this going to be a deck that is competitive and top tier no, there's too many things that blow it out. Ugin's too good against it. Skyclave Apparition's too good against it. People are prepared for artifacts and enchantments. We got Disenchanted, and we've seen Feed the Clans. There's enough answers to what we're trying to do that I don't think this is ever going to be a top-tier deck, but with some tuning, with some improving, with some improvements, I think this could be, like, a fun casual deck, at least in Standard, which... I mean, a fight casual deck is a fine thing to be. And not every deck has to be winning Zeneca Rising Championships or Pro Tours or Grand Prix or whatever to be like a real deck and a worthwhile pursuit. So I think that's where Shrines end up. I think it would be a little bit better than it was today. Not tier one, but good enough that you could play it at the lower ranks on the ladder. Have some fun with it. So I think overall, oh, Containment Priest half sideboard five color shrines we gotta call this one a uh, jank slash a meme but i think it does have some potential to be a fun casual deck at least and it is really fun to play it's cool to see shrines doing their thing so there is some upsides to it it's just really inconsistent gets blown out some by some things and please for the love of god if you start building a sideboard at least finish it add all 50 cards i don't care what those cards are just add them in there like add something in there and it's gonna be better than nothing so anyway Anyway, that has been our meme or dream for this week. <laughs> five color, half sideboard. I'm so used to saying no sideboard. Five color, half sideboard, 
Ugin Containment Priest uh, Shrines for Standard. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.